Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amun Saktivel, and this is part three of the unit testing playlist. Right? In this video, we're going to understand what is testables, and uh, we're also going to see one of the testable called as mock. Right? Uh, I'm going to give a very good uh, example on how we could understand this in a much cleaner way, and I'm going to also give you how we could do this with Makito and without Makito. So again, Makito is a unit testing framework. We're going to dive deep into that in a, in a bit of time but you know this is what we are going to cover again for people who doesn't know what is a test double you can imagine test double like your stunt artist in movies right if you if you're going to um you know in movies if the actor is going to perform some dangerous actions they normally use a stunt artist who want to do the task for them right so and and similarly in in software development if we have anything that is expensive for example uh, you want to write a unit test and uh, it, it involves api calls or database calls which are uh, which is time consuming and you know it's also expensive as well right so you need to set up the databases or you need to make an external call to an api the the server might not be in a position to return you proper response so these things might affect your test so you don't want to do that and that's why uh, you use some sort of testables to eliminate those kind of dependency right just to make sure that you are that you isolate and test your own code so that's the idea so whatever that's going to help you for doing this is called as testables there are different testables and one of them is marks right so mark is a testable and it provides a nullified version of a class right for example if the class has uh, an integer it provides you zero right if a, if a class has an object uh, a type and it returns a null if it has string, it returns null, right? So it has a boolean, it returns false. So it, it it provides you the default or the nullified version of a class. And most importantly, it doesn't have any role to do the test itself, right? So we want to eliminate the dependencies uh, uh, with, with the help of mocks. So yeah, with, if you don't understand any of this, that's all right. But just you need to understand two things. Testables are basically like stunt artists in movies. We're going to use it to eliminate the external dependencies. The marks is basically one of the uh, testable. Um, again, it, it doesn't have any role into the test, right? It helps us to uh, eliminate the ex external dependencies, right? With, so let's see some really good examples from test automation. So you don't have to worry about it. Again, I'm going to use the one framework. Again, if you guys doesn't know what is one framework, it's a framework that I have built. It's publicly available for anyone to use. It's a, it's a one single framework where you could automate web, mobile, and API automation. I also have basic tests, uh, assertion wrappers built, reporting build, everything is already done. There's also a playlist on, uh, you know, how we could learn about all these things, how to write more tests into it, stuff like that, right? But yeah, in this case, I want to go to a code. Uh, you know, I have written a code card that's response assert, right? For example, I have an API test here uh, that says, um, user API, it hit, it hits uh, this, you know, uh, it's an, it's an, you know, API user class, right? What it does is it, it hits this particular endpoint, you know, I'm using recursive uh, dot in as the, as a server, and it, it hits this particular endpoint with the user ID that we are passing, uh, for example, API slash user slash two, uh, it, it makes a get call to it. And what it does is it returns you the response, right? So, um, and then I want to assert the response in normal way, how we could do it. So normally, if you want to assert it, you have to use assertions from assert J or J unit and then assert. So response dot, let's say I want to first assert response status code uh, dot is equal to you know, 200. So, and then the next one, you have to duplicate this. And then let's say instead of the status code, you want to assert, let's say something else. Uh, for example, you want to, assert to string whatever so you 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 have to write multiple lines of statement like this so instead of that what i have done is i have created a class called as response assert class okay so this is basically using uh, assert j so what it does is it extends the abstract assert um, again we pass the self and the uh, response object again guys i have made a separate video on how to do all these things i leave that in the description uh, but coming back to the our original goal so we have written some methods okay these are all some utility method that i have written so any users of this framework can go ahead and write assert that and then pass the response and then write the fluent assertions like this right this way 
uh, the code becomes much cleaner instead of they writing these things you know multiple times you now we are trying to avoid boilerplates and also provide a lot of built-in utils so for example matches schema in file right it automatically goes and check this json and checks whether the response is matching the schema right people doesn't have to do a lot of implementation they just want to add more tests and they don't have to worry about building these things so this is one of the util that i have built and i want to make sure that this works all the time right so the first thing is in the response assert class we have a static method called as assert that so the idea behind this one is naming us assert that is because in 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 j unit or assert j the assert that method is coming from your assertions um a package sorry the class but here we are going to use a similar uh, you know naming convention so response assert so in my test i will just use response assert dot assert that and uh, response so you have to pass a response and what we do uh, with that so we just simply you know create a new instance of it so instead of directly calling the constructor we use a static method for better readability again the convention is using assert there so once i pass the response it just pass it back you know it, it just creates an instance of it okay and then it returns the instance of response assert so now i need to write a unit test and make sure that this always returns the response assert right or um you know something like this right you know obviously people can you know if somebody going to change this to let's say string it obviously go, throws compile time errors but this is just an example for you to understand see the the main thing here is if i pass a response to this particular method it should return me a response assert instance that's it now to test this i need to pass a response right how can i write a unit test for this okay let's go here and inside this i'm going to create a, a new class called as unit test and sorry it should be unit test package and then i want to call it as upside sorry response assert test right yeah and then it doesn't have to be public and okay so now i'm going to write a test so void assert that so so my goal is to check whether the assert method that call assert that call from you know response assert class is returning uh instance of response assert dot class right so this is what i want to do this is what i want to check right but if i want to check this there is a problem with that right so because let's say i want to write an assertions right using assert j for example here assert that if i try to do a call um response assert assert dot assert that i need to pass a response okay where will i get this response from okay i cannot simply pass a response okay how will i do this uh, this is where this is an external dependency okay the one way that i could do this i could make a real i could make a real api call okay i could make a real api call and like what i what i have done here i could make a real api call to a request.in endpoint for example this is the one that i am speaking about so this is request.in i could make a real api call to this particular endpoint and use this as a response that is one thing but the problem is this request.in might go you know unavailable it may not be available when the unit test is running so the unit test might fail so and the second case is uh, this might also return um you know this might also return response after two minutes right maybe this is a heavy response call and you cannot wait until then right so so because of these uh, stuff i don't want to use that then how will i do this okay let's go back here and and the first way that you could do is so the real api call is not possible because it can be expensive it can it can be time consuming and it prone to failures right prone to failures so we don't want our unit test to fail because there is a problem with the external dependency we don't want to do that because the unit test has to fail only because there is a problem if the unit test itself so when it is not actually returning response assert so so how to do that then 
So the, the one way is you could create a simple uh, response mark. This is without marketer. The first way is you create a class, right? And you implement this response interface, right? That's coming from io.restitute. And then you implement all the methods here. And I'm not doing anything. I'm just leaving them like that. It's a default, you know, response, right? So let's go here. And then I use the, the response mark that I created now. And compiler is happy. So once I do this, I will check response assert dot class whether the whether it is returning me this. Now if I run the test, again guys, this is just an example. Okay. Um. Okay. So this is complaining because of some other stuff. Um. Uh, so what I can do is for now I will use a different version. So it has nothing to do with the test. So let's try to run it again. So the test will obviously pass, right? So the compiler is happy and we are also happy because we have created a unit test that actually tests what we want to test that is instead of response as dot class uh, without any external dependency. We are happy, everyone is happy. But the response mark class here is, is idle, right? It doesn't do anything. So if you notice, this is a simplified, simple nullified uh, class, right? So for example, if you saw this is returning a still, instead of that, it returns a null. Um, same way, if you go anywhere, it returns, let's say if there is a Boolean, it will return false. And let's say if it is a byte array, it returns new byte array of zero, uh, but there is no integer and stuff. But yeah, so here is an integer and it returns zero. So this is, this is called a mocking, but we haven't used the mocking framework. So the problem with this approach is in, in real world, in real world, uh, creating uh, mock classes uh, with an nullified response uh, is again time consuming, is time consuming, right? Uh, so, so we don't want to do that. Uh, then what we want to do is we use we have to use a marking framework called as Makito. So let's add Makito here. Um, so let's use the Makito core from the org Makito and this one. So all looks good. Let's uh, import all the dependencies. And this time, instead of using new response mark uh, or the mark class that we have created, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call, there is a method called as uh, so mock method, or you can say mockito dot mock. So now there is a method called as mock, the static method from mockito, uh, you know, class that accepts a class instance. So for example, the class type. So I'm gonna simply say response dot class. That's it. So now this response should come from the io rest issue dot response and it's gonna give me a response mark, right? Instead of you spending time in creating the class and providing the implementation, you know, you just simply call this response mark and everything will be taken care. If you simply run the test, it will pass. So this is this is what mock is. So mark is a nullified class instance. Uh, you can create it yourself or you could leverage Makito or any other unit testing library to generate it for you. So now you could also do a static import. It becomes like this. And then you don't have to even expose it. Like you could do this all, you know, and then this test will also pass. So this is called as mark. And we have used to mark method from Makito library to mark our response dot class. So if you notice here, this mark, this, this particular mark doesn't have any any you know uh, significance in the in the code itself okay it's just there to 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 satisfy the compiler so that's that's how we use mark and we will more about we, we will we we'll learn up more about how we could extend this you know how we could write more unit tests what are, whether it is a good unit test or not okay but what are the example that we have you know given here is just for an example okay don't tell me, you know, this is not a good use case for writing a unit test and all that. It's just an example. Okay, I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, Tata, bye-bye from Odin. See you guys, bye.